Hello everybody, Go Away here, bringing you yet another episode of Ace Academy. If you're new to the series and new to the channel, I highly, highly recommend you hitting that link in the description below or in the annotation above to check out the playlist and start from episode 1 and work your way back up to here. Now, if you just missed the previous episode from yesterday or just from whenever, hit that previous button and go back to the previous episode, then continue. So without further ado, now that all the introductions are out of the way, we can start with this save again. So what happened was basically we were talking about how the arena is cursed on one of the reading days because of Nori and Yori. But what is the real story behind why this has happened? They were fiercely competitive in the arena and their matches were thrilling to watch. Yori was the older twin by a few seconds and no matter how often they battled, he always took first rank. So he was godly compared to the other one then. Nori hated being outmatched and overshadowed by his brother and trained harder than any other pilot at school. Okay, so he had an inferiority complex, I guess? <laughs> at the end of the season, the twins' highly anticipated match was just as exciting as ever, especially when Nori took the title of first rank from his brother. Whoa. I guess Nori's training finally paid off. Valerie raises an eyebrow. Seriously? This is so cliche. Is it cliche or cliche? I don't know guys, you tell me. Cho gives her a look but otherwise ignores her. It was all anyone could talk about, but Yori was furious. He didn't think it was possible that his brother could surpass him. He accused his brother of cheating and continued to pester Nori until Nori couldn't take it anymore. What, then he killed himself? They agreed to one final match, no holds barred, which would prove who was the better pilot once and for all. Okay. Obviously, the school would never allow no-holds-barred matches, so they set up a time after hours to meet in the arena. Okay, I mean, how'd they get past security? I mean, did, didn't you see how hard Yuna had to try just to get into the hangar? Boring. <laughs> just wait! Does anyone else notice that Valerie has an ahoge? I didn't notice that until right now. You see that thing sticking out of her hair? That's an ahoge. I might be pronouncing it wrong, but you know what? I don't care. <laughs> When they met in the ring, they readied their weapons like usual. Charging their laser guns, they waited for the signal. And then BAM! They both died! As soon as it sounded, they simultaneously unleashed their shot which collided in a huge explosion! Wait... Is that even possible? That's not how explosions happen. <laughs> Valerie caught on too! Trust me, it happened! I don't know how it did, but it did! All right, so there's a story that says, well, there's a saying that goes, if a tree falls in a forest and nobody's around to hear it, does it make a sound? Who the heck was around to hear this explosion? If it doesn't make a sound, it never existed. Mayu and Yuna not along with Sho. After the smoke cleared, standing in the middle of the arena were the twins' two gears. But their body mysteriously disappeared! Whoa. Okay... That's not the weird part. The weird part is that there was no trace of the brothers. Both the cockpits were completely empty. Ah, I was right! Mayu shudders. There weren't even ashes or anything. Why does it sound too predictable and fake? Wait, let's go back a second to this explosion. How did the Gears even survive that? That's part of the mystery. They say that the brothers' spirits are trying to finish the battle to see who is the better pilot. And any pilot who dares get between them will suffer the consequences. Sounds like a dumb story to me. Anyone else agree with me? No? Okay, it's just me then. Valerie cocks her head to the side. You guys really believe this stuff? I mean, no, I don't, but it seems like the rest of my team is pretty adamant about it. It's real! Ever since then, anyone who's used their gear on the anniversary of the brothers' battle has ended up with serious injuries. Okay, please elaborate. I know you're, a, you're like very conscientious of all the pilots' health, so you probably wouldn't lie about this. So tell me about your sources. Yeah, there was this kid whose gear malfunctioned and started moving on its own. And the girl whose gear got stuck after it depowered, so she was trapped inside. They had to remove the whole front of her cockpit to get her out. Those are just the reported ones. A lot of times what happens in the arena stays in the arena. Valerie looks at me. What do you think? I can't handle the curse! 
I got 99 problems, but a curse ain't one. Better safe than sorry. <laughs> I got 99 problems, but a, a curse ain't one. That's the one I'm going with. I don't believe in ghosts or curses. Then how do you explain all the bad things that have happened on that day? Coincidence. People freaking depowered their gear and they got stuck because, uh, I don't know, the latch was not greased well? I don't know. It just doesn't seem logical, though, the way that all of this is happening. I don't know. Coincidences? The point is, we cannot be anywhere near our gears tomorrow. In fact, we should get out of Ace Academy altogether and go somewhere fun. Like where? Valerie's dismissive shifts... No, dismissiveness shifts to intrigue. Ooh, I like fun. Where were you thinking? A sly grin spreads across Sho's face as he whips out a handful of tickets. The hot springs, of course. Okay, where the heck did you get these tickets? How long have you been carrying those? You don't want to know. Too long, I guess. I raise an eyebrow. Let's just say I've got these ready for next year, too. When do we graduate again? I forget. I know this is a university and everything, but still. That sounds like a whole lot of fan service. <laughs> you're breaking the fourth wall! I don't know what you're talking about. And Sho's reinstating the fact that you're breaking the fourth wall, so he's ignoring you. Valerie squeals and starts playing with her hair. I can't wait to go. The water is going to feel so good. <laughs> ah, yes, it is. It is indeed. I could use a break from studying. That is a fair point. You should come, Yuna. I know, right? Yuna smiles. Okay, you've convinced me. Wow, it really doesn't take much to convince you, does it? Wow, that was easier than I thought. Exactly my thoughts. What about you, Kauri? Kauri frowns. We don't have time for this. Don't you all have exams to study for? Okay, am I gonna have to convince her? We've got the whole week to study. Besides, even Mayu's going. Mayu looks away as Carrie's gaze lands on her. Are you going too? Yeah. I'll study better once I've had a short break. Yup! Maybe you should come too so that you can have a short break as well. You should go too, Carrie. It wouldn't be nearly as fun without you there. Carrie's cheeks turn pink. Oh! Does that mean you're going too? Only if you are. Her face reddens even more. I guess I can go. But we can't stay longer than a day. Yes! We got Carrie to go! Of course not. We'll be back the following morning. Yeah, just a little short break, you know. Small detour away from studying. You, life is all about the journey there, not getting there. You're trying to get to the goal too quickly by taking your exam or studying for your exam. Why don't you take a small detour, enjoy the scenery, the Grand Canyon, then go back on your main road? We better be, or I'm coming back without you. <laughs> we got it, Carrie. Show throws his arms around us. Yes, the gig's all going. Yep. Thanks, Brosef. This is a great idea. Since my day tomorrow is pretty much shot, I need to get as much studying done now as I can. I'll see you guys later. Sounds good. Carrie hurries off. I actually should get some studying done too. Me too. Same here. It's time for me to hit the books too. I mean, Valerie's already really, really smart. Does she really have to read? Yuna, too. I think, like, everybody here is pretty smart on their own already. But, you know, studious. That's just what they are. Everyone pauses to stare at her. What? You study? <laughs> Maybe that should have been my first question. Of course. How else do you think I get straight A's? Show's eyes widen. You straight A's? I mean, she is a freaking genius. Did you not see her coding? Valerie laughs. Don't sound so surprised. Oh, if everyone else is going to study, then what am I supposed to do? I don't know. Study? Uh, study? Show laugh. No, show size. I guess. We can study together. Yes, Mayu, do it. Get him to go with you. You're the only hope. Show perks up. Suddenly studying sounds like a great idea. I definitely think there's something going on between these two. I mean, it hasn't been, like, official yet, but I gotta 
really good hunch that something's going on between these two. Mayu smiles shyly. Sho takes her hand and the two of them wave before walking away. Definitely something going on. Alright, well, I'm out. I'll see you guys later. Everyone says their goodbyes and heads their separate ways. I'm feeling good today. <laughs> I find a quiet spot in the library and spend a few hours studying. Once the words start to blur on the page, I decide to take a break. I wonder if anyone else is ready for a break too. I can either go with Mayu or Yuna. Well, you guys know that my first playthrough I went for Yuna, so I'm going to have to go with Yuna on this one. Sorry, Mayu. I wonder if Yuna's still trying out different clubs. The last couple of times I went with her, it was pretty fun. Let's see what she's up to. I dial Yuna's number. She seems out of breath when she answers. Hello? Hey there, baby. Checking out any new clubs today? <laughs> hey, Yuna! Checking out any new clubs today? She chuckles. Nope. I've decided on what I want to do. Oh, and what is that? Would you like to join me in a private area, and we can each tell each other what we want to do? To each other. <laughs> I wonder how inappropriate this is right now. <laughs> oh, really? What did you choose? Tennis! Ho! Oh! I grin. Well, I kinda knew it. She's really good at it already. Is that what you're doing now? Actually, I decided to participate in the Tennis Open League today. Ooh. Does that mean you're going to try out for the school league next year? Maybe. I'm not sure yet. It's still a huge time commitment. But I can always drop in on club matches. Want to come watch? I recall how Yuna schooled me in tennis the last time we played. There's no chance there will be a this will be a boring event. Sure, I'll meet you at the tennis court. Okay, see you soon. We hang up the phone and I make my way to the rec center. Why do they call it the rec oh recreational? <laughs> I just answered my own question. I was about to ask you guys, why is it called the rec center? You don't record anything in there. And then I realized how stupid my question was. It's called the recreational center. The event has a strong turnout, and while the spectator space is not as large as the other venues, more than half of the seats are filled. I scan the crowd of students lining the tennis courts in search of Yuna. She's off on her own, leaning into a runner's stretch. Hey, Yuna! Her face lights up when she sees me. You're here! Thanks for coming! No, oh, not a problem. Anything for you. I wasn't gonna miss out on another chance to watch you wipe the floors with your opponents. She laughs. It won't be so easy this time. I recognize some of the students from the Ace Tennis League. There's a good chance I'll have to play against them. Ah, oh, that's no problem. You'll just wipe the floor with them and then take their spots on the team. Darr. I take another look at the students holding tennis rackets. Most of them keep to themselves. They wear solemn faces and quietly stretch. A small group of students are gathered in a circle. Those must be the League members. Eh, I don't think I know who any of them are. Yuna pauses and points out the ones she recognizes. That girl with short hair is also a second year, and a pretty strong player on the team. She's actually from my hometown. We trained together in high school. Is that why you're so good too? The girl is one of the only students with a smile on her face. She rolls her wrists and lets her racket hang loosely by her side. The guy to her left is a first year. He just made it onto the team, so he's still in training. As Yuna gives me the stats on her opponents, her demeanor changes. Her posture relaxes, and her eyes glance alertly around the court. She'd fit, she'd fit right in with the rest of us in the pre-combat room if she were a pilot. Ah, she's kind of nervous for her match. <laughs> That's kind of adorable. And that small guy beside them is actually their star player. Why do I have a feeling this is kind of like a small reference to Prince of Tennis? The small guy beside them is their star player. What was his name again? Ryoma? Ryota? The guy from Prince of Tennis, the short guy. Ech Echizen? Yeah, I think that's his name. Really? I glance skeptically at him. He looks like a high schooler who's still waiting to go through puberty. Ah. <laughs> yeah, he's a third year and captain of the tennis team. In fact, she... Yuna points again to the first girl. We'll probably take his place as captain next year. Oh. 
Alright guys, we're heading close to that 15 minute mark. As usual, thank you all for joining me. If you like the content I provided, please hit that like button as it really helps a lot. And if you like my content and you want to watch more of it and you want to see every single update as I do upload every single day, highly, highly recommend you hit that subscribe button down below so that you can keep up with my latest uploads. Thank you very much for joining me and I will see you in the next episode of Ace.